Hey guys, welcome back to Montreal Expos Franchise, episode 33. We're going to finish off the regular season in season 4, which is going to most likely be our last regular season as well. Take a look at the standings real quick. We're three and a half games up from the New York Yankees, so we've overtook them in the division by just a little bit with a month to go. We got um, we're in the month of... September, of course. Uh, we're gonna finish off this month in this episode. Only got three games today because we're gonna show the we're gonna show the end of the season standings at the later on after the game plays over, and I'll show you the league leaders and uh, who won the awards, all that shit. So, uh, look at the wild card race. Very tight. Yankees only a game up of the Astros for that second wild card. In the first game, we're going against the Twins, and the Twins are eighty four and fifty. They're having quite a good year. I uh, saw so the White Sox. They're battling it out. With the Sox for the Central. Now we're going up against Stephen Hyatt. Having a pretty good year. First inning, it's Ian Happ. Nobody on. Two outs. It's a 3-2 pitch that gets roped in the right center and gone into the second deck for a home run. His 25th of the season. So uh, his home run numbers went a little bit down. I mean, he's still got the rest of the month to, to bring it up. I think he might get to 30. But um, usually, you know, Ian Happ's around 30 by now fighting for 40. Uh, but that's okay. This is actually Ian Happ's last year. So even if we were to do it next season, this would be Ian Happ's, you know, last season. This would be it. it this in the postseason would be his last episodes. Uh, but we'll see. Austin Meadows, he bloops one in there for a base hit. That's going to give us a 4 nothing lead. We jump off uh, to a great start through 5. Nick Lodolo shutting him down right now in the 6th. Mitch Garver hits it opposite field down the line for a ground rule double. And then next batter, Eric Peralta, uh, is going to rip one down the right field line as well. So back-to-back -back doubles, scores a run. Uh, that would be the end of the night for L Nick Lodolo. He pitched great, though. Uh, six innings, only one run. Only a few hits, 106 pitches. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, this would be the end of the night for Nick Lodolo. Jesse Winker can't make the play out there and left. Uh, think about Hunter. I actually, I uh, think I lost out on that Hunter Renfro trade because what did I get for? Oh well, I got Matt Bowman, who's really good out of the bullpen, and Jesse Winker, who can hit. But I kind of do miss Hunter Renfro. He, he, uh, at least he had Gold Fielding out there, and he did hit some bombs. Uh, but whatever. Jumping ahead, uh, Colin Poche ends the threat in the sixth, so it's still four two. We're gonna jump ahead all the way to the ninth. That is our rookie catcher, Cedeno, going down on strike. This is a good pitch. And then next batter, Wander Franco, is going to ground a second. So we don't score first and third one out. Uh, but we got a two-run lead for our boy Glass now. And he makes quick work of him in the ninth. A nice strikeout there to end it. And we win this one 4-2. Nice win. Great performance from Nick Lodolo. who has been kind of up and down in his rookie season. But this is definitely one of his better outings of his career so far. Up next, Baltimore Orioles. We jumped a little, that kind of way ahead, a couple weeks ahead uh, against Baltimore. I don't, I don't remember if we ever even played in Baltimore. I'm sure we have at one point, you know, on video during one of these four seasons. But I just saw it on the schedule, and I was like, I don't think I ever played in Baltimore. So let's play it anyway. In the first, uh, Orioles threatening. Now Trinos on the mound for us. That's going to be a sack fly and an RBI, and we're going to go down one nothing early on. Uh, still in the first run on second, two outs. Austin Hayes is going to go ground out to first. Nice play by Eric Ruiz to his right. Throws over to Torinos for the out. Uh, Chris Shaw got the sack fly in the first inning. Now he's going to walk to load the bases with only one out in the third. Young Torinos kind of struggling. 57 pitches already through three innings. Uh, here's Austin Hayes again. He's going to rip one hard, but what a play by Wander Franco. And he still turned two. That was beautiful. Look at that play by Wander Franco. Nice diving stop, flip with the glove over to second. And Adamas throws on the first to complete the double play. That's one of the most pretty, beautiful, sexy double plays you're going to see. And that's Vlad Jr. hitting one out of here. That's going to be a two-run shot. It's going to give us the lead in the fourth. It's just like that. It's 2-1. No offense this whole game, but look at Vlad Jr. He has 30 bombs now all of a sudden. He was batting like 2 214 when he came to us, struggling 220 something. I don't know. I don't remember off the top of my head. But he was struggling when he came to us. Now he's hot. You'll see his, uh, uh, what's it called? His stats at the end of the episode of what he finished with. That's Wander Franco. Nice one in the hole, but a beautiful play by the Orioles third baseman uh, to save a run. Next batter is Austin Meadows. They intentionally walk him. Can't blame him. They wanted no part. Not sure, though, why two outs. Lefty, lefty. They'd rather verse Ian Happ. 
Uh, so I don't really get it, but okay. And they hang a slider, and Ian Happ just hits a three-run shot. So what a terrible decision by the Orioles' manager. Part of the reason why they have yet to have a season finish above 400 in this save, and we're four seasons in, which is just pretty realistic. But I feel like if I took over the Orioles, I'd finish over 500 at least once already by now. But we get the win, easy win against Baltimore, and then uh, we're going to jump way ahead to the last game of the season now. As you can see, we're a bunch of games up on the Yankees, so we clinched the division already. That's why we're going with Matt Bowman as an opener this game. Uh, and in the first, gets the first two outs no problem, and then Glaber's going to rip one down the right field line. Meadows tries to dive just for the hell of it, but that's going to get to the wall. It's going to be a two-out double for Glaber Torres. Uh, some early trouble in the first. It's Stanton. I uh, that, uh, hung that one, but Adamas is there to make the play and throw on a first for the out. So no score. We're going up against Garrett Cole again. I think it was last year. I think it was last year, two years ago. Uh, last game of the season, we went up against Garrett Cole, even though like they had won the division already, but whatever. Uh, I think the Yankees actually needed to win this game. I think they're like one game out at this point from the Astros for the wild card. Uh, I might be wrong. We'll see at the end of the the uh, video the standings but i'm pretty sure the yankees lose by like one game or they're one game out at this point or if they lose they'll be one game out i don't fucking remember let's just jump to the highlights um that's a base hit wilson Contreras rbi base hit to get the yankees on the board this was a good pitcher's duel heading into the seventh we're bringing in a new pitcher every inning or two in the seventh, it's Eric Ruiz. He's going to rip a base hit up the middle with the runner on second. Only has 28 speed, but we got to send him home. There's two outs. Might not get a chance like this again. Winker dives in there. He's safely. He throws just a little bit offline. It's 1-1. We're jumping ahead to the bottom of the ninth. Looking for a walk-off. It's Vlad Jr. against Luis Sessa. The 3-2. And that ball's ripped into the gap. And it is over Stanton's head. What is he doing out there in left? That's going to be a two-out double for Vlad Jr., uh, we got perfectly, we're perfectly set up for a walk off. It's Willie Adamez. He's going to strike out swing. A nice slider. Hit the bottom of the zone. It was a good pitch. Jump ahead to the 10th. Still 1 1. Uh, it's Ruiz. Did not call that a strike. The, the hump gives me a break. So that's ball four. 3 2 count. We got the hit and run on. It's the rookie. Sedano rips one into the gap. Don't bounce over the wall. It doesn't. It bounces onto the wall. And in play, and because the runner was going, we're able to score from first. Eric Ruiz scores the winning run, and we walk it off on the Yanks in game 162. A game that didn't really mean much for us, but it's always good to beat the Yankees. As you're going to see in a sec, I'm, I'm pretty confident that knocked the Yankees out of the playoffs. I think they missed it by a game. Uh, but we'll see. Look at this year Wander Franco had, man. 302, 31 bombs, 93 RBIs. Absolutely unreal. His overall jumped up to a 95 because of his morale. So good. Meadows hit 46 bombs this year. He wasn't doing anything in the beginning of the season. Uh, but it finished with 46. Ian Happ finishes with 30, like I predicted he would. Um, 267, 94 bombs. Pretty good year. Jesse Winker. Uh, he only played against righties. But he did pretty – I mean, he hit 282. He had 15 home runs and 51 RBIs for only playing against righty. So that's that's pretty good, I'd say. Not bad. I, I'm not mad at all. I like Jesse Winker. I think I might move him down for the playoffs because look at this. Vlad Jr. batted 284 with 30 home runs and 96 RBIs. I mean, my goodness. He was just on a tear ever since coming home to Montreal. He's just feeling comfortable here, you know. That, that, that Montreal Dome, it's bringing up memories for him. Uh, Willie Adamas, pretty good year as well, 274 and 93 RBIs. So a good, year, another good year from Willie Adamas. And look at this guy, Eric Ruiz, man, 324, 26 bombs and 85 RBIs. And that's his. That's, he's a rookie, and he didn't even play a full season. Now, I think he played just a little over 100 games. Let's uh, check real quick. See how many games we played, because this kid is an absolute stud, man. Wow, what a decision that was, calling down Nate Lowe and bringing this guy. We're going to check on Eric Ruiz's stats in just a sec. Um, but here's Greg Jones. Uh, he had a decent year, but the stat that stands out the most, 22 stolen bases. So good year from Greg Jones. And then rookie Cedeno didn't really get a lot of play time. Still had seven home runs, though. Not bad. Uh, Will Myers didn't do bad against lefties. Uh, Shiner, everyone else in the bench, they don't play much. Unless they play in the sim, I, I really don't. 
play them too much or just I, I throw them in here and there in the episodes. I'm sure you guys probably noticed. Um, I didn't check Eric Ruiz's stats, but I'm going to do it later. Don't even worry. I'll go back to it. Uh, Blake Snell had actually a pretty down year in the fours ERA. Woodruff, though, great year. 3.14 he finished with. Uh, he might be our ace heading into the ALDS. Torino's pretty solid again. Just can't complain. The dude never gives me anything to complain about. Belazovic finished with a low four ERA, so whatever. I'm not going to complain. I'll take it in this game. That's that's decent ERA for a starter right? when you're playing franchise mode. It just is, unfortunately. Castillo, uh, 2.88. Pretty good. Matt Bowman, 2.77. Look at this bullpen. Did really good. Uh, so good first year for Bowman. Look at Poach, 113 innings and uh, had a below two ERA. Look at Givens in the two. Chad Green uh, definitely underperformed, but whatever. As long as he has a good postseason, that'll be fine. Jose Alvarado, 283. Uh, another pitcher with a sub three ERA in the bullpen. And then Glass now, who uh, 41 saves. Pretty good. 10 blown saves, though. Uh, not, not ideal, but 41 saves. So back to back 40 plus safe seasons. Uh, let's see who won the batting title. Alex Bregman bat 325. He probably knew what pitch was coming though. Uh, jump a little bit ahead to where our guys are going to lead. Uh, we had Wander Franco hit 40 doubles this year. Same with Willie Adamas. So that's pretty impressive. Bogarts hit 48 though. Uh, let's see. Son Dominguez had 11 triples. Here we go. Home runs. Uh, Stanton hit 58. Almost won the triple crown. Stanton. He finished second in batting average. So Meadows, 46 home runs. That led the team uh, by a, a little bit. I think the next closest was, what, 30? Tied with 30. Is Guerrero and Ian Happ. Uh, RBIs. We got Meadows in the uh, top 10 there with 106. Stanton, 136 RBI. What a, what a year he had. Uh, Wanda Franco scored the second most runs. Uh, stolen bases. We got Greg Jones down there at sixth with 22 stolen bases. Again, good year from him. Ian Happ was the most walked player in the league. 105 times he was walked. That's respect right there. Uh, OPS, we had Franco down there in the top five. Very good to see from Wander Franco. He just had a great, great season. Brandon Woodruff led the league in wins. Got nine, only, only pitcher with 19. And uh, Tyler Glass now. <clears throat> Excuse me, a fourth in saves with 41. Led the league last year in the top five this year. I mean, what a decision that was. But this is the last year of his contract. Woodruff had uh, the best ERA in the team, seventh in the league. Yanni Trinos is down there in 12th uh, as well. Home runs allowed. Woodruff didn't give up many of them. Uh, we got Garrett Cole through four shutouts. My God, Chris Sale struck out 256. He's still killing it. Uh, Snell's in the top 10. Uh, complete games. We only had Snell and Belazovic throw one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump ahead a little bit more. Uh, pitching war. Brandon Woodruff second in that. And then Wander Franco second in batting war. Uh, let's jump ahead to the awards. We only got a couple. Uh, Eric Ruiz, Rookie of the Year. Uh, let me go into more depth into his stats now that I got him. Um, so look, just look how much the stats grew, first of all. Absolutely insane. He, he played 101 games, hit 26 home runs, 85 RBIs, and hit 324. There's not a bad thing you could say about this guy. He's only 23. He's a switch hitting first baseman. I mean, my goodness. Just the stud. I think that, I don't think we've had a player win rookie of the year before, have we? Did Wander Franco? No, I don't think he did. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Have we ever had a rookie of the year? I don't think Wander Franco won it. Uh, but rookie of the year, we don't have much. I'm uh, just going through it real fast because it's usually the same players anyway. Uh, Wanda Franco second silver slugger to Glaber. Glaber's a little too good. Austin Meadows, yeah, he won a silver slugger for the outfield, of course. That's um, that's like his second or third, uh, probably his third or fourth. Um, so far in the four years, he, he's just so good. Austin Meadows, man, gotta love him. He's probably been the MVP uh, of this whole series, you would think. He's just every year consistent with it, always balling. Uh, in the National League, showed a little bit there. So Chris Paddock won the Cy Young. And then uh, here's the final standings. We won by eight games over the Yankees. So we knew we had the division in hand at the last game of the season, but we had to try and eliminate the Yankees. And they did not make the wild card. We're going to see the wild card standings in just a sec. White Sox ended up winning that division uh, by 10 games. By 10 games. When, when we played the Twins earlier, there was like, what, three weeks of the season left? And it was neck and neck. And now it's 10 games. My goodness. Uh, the Angels... 
won the division. Astros finished in the wild card. So the Twins and Astros got the wild card spots. The Yankees lost it by one game. So we did pretty much eliminate them in that game 162 by walking it off. So that's always good to see because we want to avoid the Yankees in the postseason at all costs. We don't want to play them. We can't beat them. So that's good to see. In the NL Nationals won the East. The Marlins won game out, but they won the wild card spot. So they're going to be playing in the wild card. Uh, in the Central, the Reds won the division with the Brewers taking the other wild card. Those two have been uh, the top teams in that division in this save for a little bit now. Dodgers won the West, of course. The Padres finished nine games out. Uh, Brewers, Marlins going to play each other in the wild card. So those are the standings. And the next episode, we are going to be in the ALDS. Uh, you could probably tell from the standings there. We are going to play the Angels, so the White Sox got the first seed. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. It'll really help me out. I appreciate all of you, and I'll see you guys in the ALDS.